Hi, and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at how to optimize Lightroom. Now, the reason that I wanted to do this video is people are always asking me, how many images can they have in their Lightroom catalog? And that's a very difficult question to answer because the speed of the catalog is going to depend on many, many different things. So let's go ahead and take a look at the slide and talk about some of the things that it will depend on. So. Your hardware and your software are going to play a big role in the speed of Lightroom. So one of the things that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you have all of the latest updates, whether they're updates to your operating system or updates to the application, updates to your video card drivers. You really want to make sure that you've got the most current versions because more often than not, they are the quickest. So for example, if you were in Lightroom, if you go underneath the Help menu, you'll notice that there's an option here to check for updates. So you can always check for updates at any time. All right, let's talk about the CPU speed, the speed of your computer. Well, all I really can say here is the faster the better, because obviously the faster your computer runs, the faster the CPU is, the faster everything's going to happen as far as your image processing goes. Now what also is going to play an important role is the drive speed, right? So that's the speed of your internal drives as well as your external drives. And not only the drive speed, but also you need to make sure that you've got some free space on that drive. You really never want to fill up a drive more than 80%. You always want to have at least 20% of the drive free so that we can cache files to it, especially if it's your primary drive where, say for example, your applications are running. Now, as far as actual drive speed, um, I would say that as a good rule of thumb, if you've got a 7200 speed drive and that's your internal drive, that's going to be a serial ATA drive, that's going to work really well for you. Of course, you can always go to the solid state drives. They're going to be a little bit more expensive. In an application like Lightroom, a solid state drive is really going to help as far as like launch time, if you have the application on it. Um, if you have your database on the solid state drive, it's going to make uh, database searches much quicker. So for example, if you're trying to find things uh, using the metadata search, that's going to be helpful. But a solid state drive isn't going to help as much as you might first think it would as far as the actual image processing goes. So it's kind of a trade off there. Also, as far as RAM goes, I think our minimum system requirement is two gigs, but I can tell you if you're going to run any other applications, you're going to be much happier if you get at least four gigs. If you're running Lightroom and Photoshop and maybe InDesign all at the same time or your email or a browser, you're going to want to boost that to eight. And if you can afford 16 or more, I would say definitely take advantage of more RAM. All right, now the second area that we want to talk about is the Lightroom catalog and how to work within Lightroom to optimize it. So let's first talk about the location of the catalog. This is really important. I would suggest that you put your catalog on your fastest internal drive. Again, if that happens to be a solid state drive, that is going to run faster than say that, um, that serial ATA drive. If you have to, like maybe you're in an environment where you're actually taking the catalog and your files from one computer to the next, then obviously you would have to have that catalog or the um, database on your external drive, in which case hopefully the connector between the main computer and that drive is the fastest one that you can find. Finally, you do not want to put the catalog on a network drive. We actually do not support that with Lightroom. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your previews. As far as your standard size previews go, you want to make sure that you're making or building a large enough preview so that when you're in the grid mode, for example, in Lightroom and you zoom into the loop mode, you want to make sure that that preview gets cached, especially if you're spending time on import making those previews. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. When I actually click import, over here in the right hand side where it says build previews, you see how that's set to standard. Of course, the quickest option here would be minimal, but then every time you change from grid view into loop view, then Lightroom is going to have to build that preview. So I personally would rather have Lightroom build all of the standard size previews right there on import. It might take a little bit longer during the import process, but once they're all imported, then it's going to be much quicker to move from one image to the next. So I would prefer that on standard.
Now let me go ahead and cancel out of here. I don't actually need to uh, import anything right now, but I do want to show you how to set that standard preview size. Right here under the Lightroom menu, I'm going to come down to Catalog Settings. Of course, if you're on Windows, you would want to go underneath the Edit menu. And here under the File Handling area, this is where you define the standard preview size. So you can see I have it set all the way up to 2880, but this is going to depend on the resolution of your monitor. So what you want to pick for your standard preview size, you want to see what dimensions your monitor is, and then you want to pick the long dimension of that monitor, and you want to pick the standard preview size that's as close to that dimension, but not smaller than it. Because if you pick a standard size preview that's smaller than what you're going to see when you go into loop view, well, then Lightroom's going to have to build another preview. So that would take more time. So just make sure that the standard preview size that you select is a little bit larger than the longest dimension of your monitor. All right, while we're here, let's also talk about one-to-one -one previews. One-to-one -one previews are automatically generated in Lightroom when you zoom up to one-to-one. -to -one. And Lightroom will then hold on to that preview. And right here is where you determine how long you want Lightroom to hang on to that preview. Of course, all of these previews are going to be used in the library module. And so they're going to make moving around and editing and comparing images a lot faster but they also take up space, and the larger the preview that you're looking at, the longer the preview is going to take to load. So you want to make sure that these one-to-one -one previews, that when you're finished with the job and you don't think you're going to go back to the image, or when you're finished editing down your shoot, that you will dispose of these previews. And Lightroom will do that automatically based on whatever duration you select right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select after 30 days for now, and we'll close that. And by the way, if you ever want to manually generate previews, you know that you can do that by just going under the library menu, coming down to previews, and you can build your standard size previews here. You can also build one-to-one, -one, but again, I would be a little bit more selective as far as building one-to-one -one previews. You can discard all your one-to-one -one previews if you want to. And then you can also choose whether or not you want to build your smart previews. Of course, that's going to determine on whether or not you think you're going to need to work on the images in your catalog while those photographs are actually offline. So perhaps all of your photographs are on an external drive, you're traveling on the road, you don't have that external drive. If you're going to need to work on those images, especially in the develop module, then you're going to want to make sure that you generate those smart previews for those files that you're going to want to work on. But again, this is going to take up space. Of course, the trade-off is if you don't have them, then you can't work in the develop module. All right, and there's one more thing here under the Lightroom catalog, and that's this optimize. So you'll want to make sure when you quit Lightroom, and let's go ahead and do that right now. I'll go under the Lightroom menu here and just quit out of it. Right here in this dialog box where it says back up the catalog, you'll want to optimize the catalog after backing up. And this is actually on by default, so just make sure that you keep that on so that the, the Lightroom catalog itself is always being optimized. All right, I'm going to skip it this time, and then we'll go ahead and return right back to Lightroom. All right, so we've talked about the hardware and software. We've talked about the Lightroom catalog. What about your individual files? Well, a lot of things are going to make a difference here as far as the performance of Lightroom. The first is probably the size of your images. Are you shooting with a camera phone that's maybe 5 or 10 megs? Or are you shooting with like a medium format back? in which case all of your images are maybe 70 megs. All of that is going to make a difference because when you work, for example, in the develop module, we have to actually read each one of those images from the disk. And that's actually an important point. These previews that we were talking about, they're going to help you in the library module and also in the output modules, but they don't help you in the develop module, unless, of course, we're talking about the smart previews. The smart previews are used in the develop module if the original files aren't online, but if the original files are online, then those are what are used in the develop module. So that means that all those previews that are cached are really going to help performance in the library module, but they're not going to help when you're moving from one image to the next in the develop module. So the size of the original file, that's going to make a difference when you're in the develop module and Lightroom actually has to read that file from disk. 
the location of your images is also going to play an important role, right? If your images are all on your internal drive and Lightroom can access them and read them from disk very quickly, then obviously the performance will be better. If they're on an external drive, it's going to depend on the connection between the internal and external drive. And of course, if they're remote somewhere on a network, then the speed is going to be determined on the speed of the network. So what I see a lot of photographers do, because they don't have an infinite amount of space, on their internal drive is they simply have maybe the last two months or so of work, the maybe unfinished projects, the projects that they're currently working on, they're going to keep those on their fastest internal drive. And then as soon as they're done with those projects in Lightroom, they'll just drag them to the external drive that might be a little bit slower. So that might help improve performance as well. We talked about whether you're in the library module using the cached previews, or if you're in the develop module reading the file from disk. We should also talk about the camera raw cache. If we go under here to the Lightroom menu and I select my preferences, or if on Windows you go under the edit menu and go to your preferences, underneath the file handling area right here, you'll notice that there's an area for the camera raw cache settings. I would go ahead and increase that if you move back and forth in the develop module from one image to the next. If you're always moving forward from one image to the next to the next to the next, then increasing this cache value isn't going to help that much. But if you go maybe look at one image and then return back to the previous image and then go two images forward and then maybe two images back because you're comparing, that's where this cache is really going to help performance because Lightroom is able to cache all of the data for a significant number of camera raw files, a significant number being based on what you increase this size to. So you'll notice that I've got mine set up to 20 gigs. All right, now let's go ahead and just select any image here. And I'm going to scoot over to the develop module. Here, there are a number of different changes that you can make, and some of them are going to have a much greater impact on Lightroom's performance than others. So for example, if I come down to the lens correction area, if I enable the lens profile correction and remove chromatic aberration, that's actually a pretty heavy correction to be applied to an image. Because if you think about it, the entire image is being changed. It's actually being distorted. Although we think of it as being undistorted, we're actually removing the distortion so that it looks better. But that's a lot of math that it takes in order to do that. So in addition to the fact that we're reading the file from the hard drive, we're converting that single channel grayscale raw file into a three-channel RGB file and color managing it, now we're also needing to enable a profile correction and remove the chromatic aberration. If on top of that you decide to use one of these different uh, upright modes, or if you come over here to the manual area and you start making manual perspective changes, again, that's one more layer of math that we're having to add in order to preview this image correctly. Then, of course, you add to that all of the options that you have, for example, in the basic panel, changing exposure, changing clarity. Again, additional math that's being laid on top in order to preview the image the way you want it. And finally, I'll just point out, we also have a number of selective adjustments, right? So these are typically global adjustments that you're making. But as soon as you pick up something like the adjustment brush and you load that with multiple changes here, and then you paint with that in your image. Every time you lay down another paint stroke, or every time you add another pin with different adjustments, of course that's also going to slow down the performance of Lightroom. So those are all things to be aware of, especially the items in the lens correction panel, and then your selective adjustments. And finally, when you do make these changes, we know that these changes are being saved to the Lightroom catalog. But many of us kind of want to take out an insurance policy. So we want to save these changes not only to the Lightroom catalog, but also to the individual files. Well, in order to do that, if we go to the Lightroom menu again and I come back down to my catalog settings, in the metadata area, you'll notice there's an option to automatically write changes to XMP. So now, if I toggle this on, not only are the changes that I've made in the develop module and in the library module, not only are they being made and saved to the Lightroom database, they're being written again to each individual file.
Now, if you're just working on one image at a time, making a few changes and moving to the next image, that might not be like a big deal. But if you've got a wedding that you've just photographed and you have 300 images and you're trying to autocorrect them all and then apply a different white balance setting and synchronize hundreds of images, you can imagine that the more files the, that you work with and the more changes that you make, instead of just writing all those once, if you have to write them twice, it will end up taking some time, especially if maybe those files are on an external server somewhere. Again, it could slow things down. So if you toggle this on, which I actually prefer the setting to be on, because then it just automatically writes the information to two places and I don't have to worry about it. If you toggle it on and you notice a decrease in performance, then it's no problem. You can just uncheck it. And then when you're done editing maybe the whole shoot or your entire project, when you go back to the grid view, just do a quick select all in order to select all of your images. Go underneath the metadata area and then choose to save the metadata to the files. And this will push the information that's in the Lightroom database into each file. What this does is it takes all of the changes that you've made and it keeps them in the Lightroom database, of course, but it also pushes all that information into each of the individual files. Well, excellent. I hope that gives you kind of an overview of how you could optimize Lightroom. And, and I hope that you understand now why I can't just answer that question of how many images can you have in Lightroom. I mean, you can have as many images as you want in Lightroom. It just depends on your system, the hardware, the software, and the number of images and what changes you make to them that will determine the performance of it. So there's no cap, there's no limit as to the total number. Really, what it comes down to is your personal expectations of how fast the application should run. So just before I go, I'm just going to scoot over here to Safari to my blog. This is blogs.adobe.com slash jcost. And you'll notice in the upper right, there's a little search area. If you want more information on this, or if you would like this in a written form, you can go ahead and just search for optimize performance within this blog and you will get two white papers, one on optimizing the performance of Lightroom and the other one on Photoshop. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.